or to erase the technology basically from the face of the earth. Now, we don't see this as just a single event. We see this as a cyclic event when we go back, you know, tens of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And so what, you know, this is why it became almost monumental right from the beginning and something we totally did not expect. We had to basically recruit the scientific knowledge and uh, the assistance from many of the top researchers in many fields, uh, astrophysics, geology, quantum physics, underwater cities, ancient civilizations, past cataclysms, in order to try to figure out what caused it. And what we came up with is nothing short of Occam's razor. We found a single effect that we believe happens in cycles that would explain every anomaly that I'd like to discuss with you, uh, George. Okay, that's going to be fascinating. When these catastrophes occur, are they different types of catastrophes, or is it the same thing? Well, we have written records from around the world in various cultures of worldwide floods. The, the flooding is a common documented effect, and it's not just in a single isolated place on the planet when it happens. It happens simultaneously ever, you know, throughout the planet almost within the same day or week. And the initial flood is what causes the initial uh, wiping out of the planet. The question right. is, what causes that? We really wanted to get down to the physics and the science. So f for, for a flood to occur around the planet on the same day, it's got to be a catastrophe of biblical proportions, perhaps an asteroid, something like that? We're looking at even something bigger than that. We're looking at a natural cycle of the planet as it moves around the galaxy. Oh, my. So the planet itself is in a cycle and does something pretty darn dramatic, you're saying? It heads towards something psychically. And every time the solar system approaches what I will get, call right now the galactic plane or the dark rift is what the ancient records referred to it as, the gravitational influences upon our solar system causes the global devastation and the, almost an instantaneous loss of life and basically resetting human civilization. And this does happen in cycles, and it does look like it's going to happen again. Uh, are there warnings, or does it just occur like that? I believe there are telltale signs uh, as the Earth and the solar system approaches the galactic plane due to the gravitational effect. But, you know, we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis basically thinking about what we're going to do the next day, the next month, where we're going to go on vacation, you know, the next year. We don't think and, and look at the overall weather pattern anomalies that are happening all around the globe to us, for instance, right now. In the last couple of years, we have had the most disastrous weather patterns, and we are approaching the galactic plane. Um, in addition to the subtle signs that we see from day to day and looking at the weather patterns, the earthquake patterns, um, we also have physical evidence left by behind these previously uh, wiped out civilizations, and we have ignored them all this time, and yet they're staring us in the face. The evidence is beyond overwhelming. Okay, you've had a number of scientists involved in this but are there an equal amount out there that are in conflict with what they believe um i i understand your question but i every scientist that we have talked to they have been in you know their specialties and this is one of the problems with science today it is one of the greatest advancements human advancements but it also has an achilles heel for example um in order to advance science, you spend your life with a team dedicated with the purpose of understanding everything there is to know about a certain field, and in most times, a high specialty within a field. All right. And so you develop a tremendous amount of knowledge in that field. Now, on occasion, you come across an anomaly that you cannot explain. The scientists, they have no explanation for it in their particular field, and they tend to put it in a black box. For example... Um, the scientists who dig the Antarctic uh, ice core samples, they have gone down and measured 450,000 years of Earth history, mapping out very carefully the CO2 concentration levels of the planet plus the temperature range of the planet and the cycles that the planet goes through. 
But every now and then, every so many tens of thousands of years, there is a layer of cosmic dust. They can't explain it. It makes no sense. So, so they set it aside. That's not their field of expertise. Is it, it, does anybody have that field of expertise, Brent? Yes. Astrophysics and quantum physics combined have that field of expertise. But, of course, their entire charter in life...